This video is about how to configure a bipolar junction transistor as a switch. In this video, we're going to learn how to power a high power LED from a microcontroller. The microcontroller does not have enough output current from its port to power this LED. This is a 100 milliamp LED and the output of the microcontroller is 5 volts at about 25 milliamps maximum. And this is a 3 volt LED. So you simply cannot just connect this uh, through a current limiting resistor directly to a microcontroller port. You need to design a circuit to amplify that current coming from the microcontroller port so you can have enough current to power this LED. If you want to build this project, you're going to need some minimum breadboarding equipment, and you can find that information at this link here on breadboardcircuits.com. You're going to need a high-powered white LED with a 3-volt drop. A 1-watt will actually work, but we're only going to run it at 100 milliamps because of the 2N3904 transistors limitations. You're going to need these resistors here. You're going to need some 390 ohm resistors and a 1.8K resistor, as shown. And of course, you're going to need that 2N3904 transistor. Bipolar junction transistor can be used in different operating modes, and one of them is called cutoff, where the transistor basically acts as an open switch. You have it's an open circuit. So that would be when this LED is turned off. You have saturation, where you have basically this the equivalent of a closed switch where the LED would be on. And then you have uh, your active region, which we're not going to cover in this video um, in detail because that is uh, what is typically used to when the, amp the uh, transistor is used as an amplifier. But essentially what that is, is the transistor is, this is an NPN transistor. You have your base current you have your collector current, and then the transistor has a gain of, say, 100. That, would make, that is what makes a transistor an amplifier, is the fact that it has what is known as a gain. It's also known as beta or HFE. The collector current is, so if you have one milliamp of base current and a gain of 100, then your collector current can be only 100 milliamps. This is when this is used in its active mode. Okay. So, but this is also, this gain is also used to determine how a transistor switch is going to be designed. In order to design this circuit, what we need to know is this is our basic circuit here. This is, uh, we're going to have a current limiting resistor. We're going to have our LED. There's our transistor. And this is our base resistor. What we need to know is the current carrying capability of this transistor. The 2N3904 is a great, very um, popular uh, general purpose transistor that we'll use in this example. And then we use in a lot of the examples on this, um, on this channel that uh, has a maximum current carrying capability of 200 milliamps. Um, but you can run this at 100 milliamps continuous uh, without a problem, uh, provided you don't have a voltage drop across that transistor of any significant amount. Therefore, it, does, it won't dissipate any appreciable power. So this LED, the high-powered LED, has got about a 3-volt drop across it, a white high-powered LED at 100 milliamps. Okay. So what we need to do is assume that when this transistor is a switch and it's going to be a closed circuit, we need to determine this resistor value. So we have our power supply here is 12 volts. So the 12 volts minus this three volts gives us nine volts across this resistor. All right, so we have nine volts across that resistor and we want to have 100 milliamps. So Ohm's law tells us that R is equal to nine volts divided by 100 milliamps. All right, so that's going to give us 90 ohms. All right, so, so for this example, um, that's 90 ohms. We need to have a 
we want to have a 90 ohm resistor here. Well, okay, so a common value resistor is 91 ohms. However, um, for experimental purposes, uh, most people don't have in their uh, bins a lot of high wattage resistors. Plenty of one quarter watt resistors. And so what we'll do here is for this, we're gonna we're gonna create a um, a resistor of approximately this value using four quarter watt resistors. And I'll, I'll show you why we're gonna do that. What we have here is four um, 390 ohm resistors, and this is gonna give us 97.5 ohms. That's gonna be the equivalent parallel resistance of four of these in parallel. And, there's, and that's, we calculate the equivalent resistance of four resistors in parallel is, uh, there's a standard equation for that. So we have 97.5 ohms, which is pretty close to 100 ohms. So we'll just go ahead and call this because these currents don't need to be that accurate. So we're just gonna call this approximately 100 ohms. All right, so that's gonna give us um, approximately 100 milliamps, you know, give or take. All right, so if you, if you have 100 milliamps passing through here, we can calculate this base resistor value. Now the gain is what you're gonna need in order to calculate this. The gain to this, 2 and 3904 is around, it's around I've, I found them to be about 180, but we'll just go with 200. Again, these don't need to be exact. So gain is 200. So the rule I use is the base current in order to get 100 milliamps here, what we're going to need is we're going to need to divide that 100 milliamps by the beta, which is 200. Okay, so that's going to give us 0.5 milliamps. So 0.5 milliamps is the very minimum amount of base current that is needed to drive this transistor uh, to um, allow 100 milliamps to flow through it. But you don't want to do that. For saturation, you want to drive it all the way into saturation because you're just on the edge of the active region and uh, saturation. You don't want to be there. You want to be deep into saturation. So in order to be deep into saturation, what I always do is I always multiply that by 5. Multiply the base current times 5, and that pushes it well into saturation uh, so that this is the voltage across this transistor is very, very low, and it becomes the equivalent of approximately a closed switch. So take that 0.5 milliamps and multiply that times five, and it gives you 2.5 milliamps of uh, base current. So in order to get 2.5 milliamps flowing through here, we need to find out what value of resistor would be needed. Now, if we have five volts from a microcontroller, this goes, we want this LED to turn on when this goes high. We want it to turn off when this goes low. So when this is high, this is five volts. So we know that. Now, the voltage at the base of this transistor, if you look at this, is like a diode symbol. In order to forward by this bias this junction, this base is going to be 0.7 volts approximately with respect to the emitter. So this is 0.7 volts there. And that's one of the rules there that you can go by. So anywhere between 0.6 and 0.7 volts is what that's going to be when this is in either saturation or in, in its active mode. So if you have 0.7 volts here, 5 volts there, you've got 4.3 volts across that resistor. You have your voltage, 4.3, and you have your current, 0 0.000, oops, 2.5 million, so 0 0.0025 amps, okay? And that gives you 1,700 20 ohms. Okay, so a close standard value to that 1720 ohms is 1800 for a 1.8k resistor. So if we use 1800 ohms, then we will be well into the saturation region for this transistor. So that's what we have here. We have a um, 1800 ohm resistor here. We've got the um, four 390 ohm resistors, which is going to be 97.5 ohms, or we're going to call it 100 ohms. That's, that's really, really close. So we're going to go ahead and then take this circuit, and we're going to hook it up and check these currents 
um, going into the base and going through the collector here. And we're going to measure the voltage across this transistor and measure the voltage across this LED. Got the circuit hooked up here. And uh, one thing I did forget to mention was why we put these four resistors in parallel. The reason is because we're going to have 100 milliamps going through this, what is now 100 ohms. And the power calculation is that if you have 100 milliamps and 100 ohms, your I squared R gives you one watt. So one resistor, one 100 ohm resistor that is a quarter watt would not be able to handle this. So if we have four one quarter watt resistors in parallel, we have the equivalent of a one watt resistor at 100 ohms, which can handle our calculated one watt. So we have a current meter over here that's going to give us the base current, which we calculated to be around 2.5 milliamps. So we should have about 2.5 milliamps here. Can't read that. Okay, 2.5 milliamps here on this side. Over here we should have our approximate, this is connected to through um, in line with the LED and the current limiting resistor. We should have our, we calculate it to be about 100 milliamps. Um, now these values are probably going to be different because the voltage across the LED is probably not going to be 3 volts. We fudge the values here a little bit just to have, so we can find our standard resistor values. Let's go ahead and turn the circuit on and see what we get. I want to use this backlight here to make it a little easier. It's probably going to go off after 30 seconds, but let's go ahead and turn this on. So I've turned this on. We've got 5 volts here. We've got 2.3 milliamps there. It's pretty close to our 2.5 milliamps. We've got 90 milliamps here. All right, so that's 90 milliamps going through the LED. All right, so that's pretty close to what we would expect. Now let's go ahead and put this. This is a voltmeter here. I hope you can read that. Not very legible in this light, but um, so anyway, we're going to measure the voltage across the transistor when it's in saturation, the voltage from the collector to the emitter, and we should get across that transistor, we're getting 2.5 or 0.25 volts. So it's really, really low, the voltage across the transistor. It's being used as a switch, and it really should be very low. The voltage across the LED we calculated, well, based on the data sheet, we should be getting about 3 volts across it. And we're actually getting 2.88 volts, which is really close, 2.8 volts. So that was the basis uh, by which we used to uh, calculate our collector current and the voltage across the, um, the resistors. So that's pretty close. And uh, that's basically it. So, and across our base resistor, we calculated that we would have about 0.3 volts, or 4.3 volts rather. So let's measure that. So we've got um, 4.13 volts across that resistor there. Now the last voltage we're gonna measure here is going to be the voltage at the base of the transistor with respect to ground we should get about 0.7 because that is what we base our calculation on this is driven hard into saturation so it's actually 0.86 volts which is okay yeah it's driven hard into saturation so we're making sure that this is saturated so those are the voltage readings uh, and our circuits working great and so we effectively are simulating the microcontroller supplying 5 volts to the base of this transistor through a resistor um, and being able to control and uh, turn on an LED that draws 100 milliamps at 3 volts using the um, very, very small available current from the output of a microcontroller. I hope you found this video interesting and informative. If you did, please like this video and subscribe to this channel for more detailed information on this project, as well as recommended breadboarding equipment, best practices, and safety tips, please go to breadboardcircuits.com. Thank you.